Excellent. Thank you very much, Ben. Good morning, everyone. Uh, quite excited to be in this important session about screening, which is often so neglected. Uh, so I will, I will be talking about uh, screening for both hypertension and atrial fibrillation in one go. Uh, these are my disclosures. I think it's quite important to realize when we look just here at major cardiovascular events uh, by different age groups um, in green, older people, 85 and older, and as we move to younger age groups, uh, we all suffer cardiovascular events, but of course with increased age, that rate is so much higher. If you reduce blood pressure by five millimeters of mercury, all these different age groups do benefit from uh, reduced cardiovascular events, but it is strongly mediated by age. If we look at patients who have atrial fibrillation and look also in terms of age groups here, you will see the same tendency. In other words, with increasing age, you would see more cardiac hospitalizations, MI hospitalizations and hospitalizations for HF and AF uh, with those with increasing age as we would expect. So I think the solution is not to age. Uh, maybe we should stop the session there. Uh, but uh, when we look at AF and population-based data, and this is from uh, 1995 already, but it shows and demonstrates exactly what Professor Friedman said earlier, that is screening is uh, recommended for AF aged 65 and old. And here you can see in a population from the US that this is the um, estimated numbers of people with AF. And you can see there's a steep decline from 65 years onwards. If you look at uh, more recent work on the prevalence and incidence of AF, it's the same. You can see there, age 65 um, has about a 6.5% uh, prevalence rate, increasing to 10, 15, 22, and 28% uh, with each decade of aging increases. So keep in mind, 6.5% at age 65. But when we look at the prevalence of hypertension among uh, adults by age, you can see that even at the age of 20 to 34, that prevalence is already the same as what is for AF at age 65, and we see also steep increases in hypertension prevalence with increasing age, so that when we reach the age of 65, basically 65% of people uh, already have hypertension. Uh, it's also very much age-related, and because high blood pressure develops from early ages onwards, there's also a cumulative effect, of course, uh, that increases the risk for atrial fibrillation. So when we uh, look at the potential mechanisms, and I don't want to go into too much detail here, but as, as clearly shown here, hypertension obviously results in structural and functional changes in the left ventriculum, as well as the left atrium, and in the end, partly forms part of the contribution to the increased risk for atrial fibrillation uh, with increasing age. What is important and what is nicely shown in this study is that if you actually do treat blood pressure intensively, there's a reduction in the incidence of AF, which do make sense based on what I've just shown you before and shows you with a tight control of blood pressure and therefore the detection of blood pressure from early ages onwards is so important to also prevent the development of atrial fibrillation. But it is a very strong relationship between these two conditions. And as was said, right, they are often both asymptomatic. And if something is asymptomatic and it rel relates to uh, cardiovascular events in the end, it is really important that both be screened for. And screening is required for detection. So if we look at screening for hypertension, um, there's been a very thorough analysis by the um, US Preventative Services Task Force recently again for is it really cost effective and beneficial to screen for hypertension because it is such a, you know, it's a tedious job to screen everyone in the clinical practice for hypertension. And so they've done a, a detailed systematic screening and as you can see in the um, evidence assessment in the middle it says uh, concludes with high certainty that screening for hypertension in adults has substantial net benefit. And that is why it is recommended also now in the new ESC guidelines once again that screening for hypertension is recommended annually uh, for people aged 40 and older and every two or three years for people younger than 40 years of age. So it's a, a really important method to detect risk. When we look at atrial fibrillation, um, it's of course not recommended for all adults. And I think for obvious reasons, as I've mentioned before, 
And the debate continues. There's many studies ongoing on whether population-based systematic screening or targeted case finding in high-risk populations is most appropriate approach for detecting AF in asymptomatic individuals. So there are several trials ongoing to evaluate this gap. But at the moment, guidelines typically recommend, as was also shown in the roadmaps from the World Heart Federation, that AF with pulse check or ECG in people aged 65 years is recommended and for hypertension people aged 18 years and older. So I just want to uh, give you some um, feedback. In terms of our screening campaign called May Measurement Month, which is an initiative by the International Society of Hypertension started in 2017, where we've started to screen people for hypertension globally through the work of volunteers. So um, it is really to raise awareness for detection of raised blood pressure, and we've had 100 plus countries taking part in this initiative, and 6.5 million people screened for blood pressure. But since 2021, we started collaborating with uh, Professor Friedman and others uh, to also see whether it's feasible to detect AF while screening for blood pressure. So here is an update on the countries, 14 countries that uh, was participating in 2023. So adults older than 18 for blood pressure obviously were recruited through opportunistic sampling. Uh, typical standard blood pressure measurement techniques are used in May measurement month and then we use these uh, with the Omron Complete and Omron 7 devices to detect both blood pressure and AF at the same time. We also collected basic information from participants through a screening questionnaire on demographics, comorbidities, use of oral anticoagulants or blood pressure lowering medication. Um, so also ask basic questions, whether AF was detected by the device and whether somebody has been previously diagnosed with AF, so whether there was awareness. So hypertension was based on the standard definition of 140 over 19, based on the mean of second and the third reading and known AF was defined as having a previous diagnosis of AF or an irregular heartbeat or taking oral anticoagulants. So this is opportunistic screening sample. It's not random sample. So as you can see here in the percentages of AF detected from ages 60 and onwards, it's 2.25.6%. So um, there was AF detected by age group and obviously that increased with age as we would e expect. And uh, so in the total group, 2% uh, with AF was detected. And in the black box there, you can see 48% had known AF and 50% of those were taking oral uh, uh, anticoagulants. At the bottom, you will see that 67% of those with AF also had hypertension, uh, some had diabetes, and some had both. So it is obviously condition with comorbidities is quite common. So I'll just screen for AF um, and hypertension, and this is a very nice review done by colleagues from Greece, uh, George Sergio and team, on the different types of uh, uh, devices, automated oscillometric devices, office, home, and ABPM, uh, a systematic review and meta-analysis on what is available. They used uh, the, the, the meta-analysis includes over 11,000 people, and they showed high performance and accuracy of screening for AFib um, and blood pressure using these devices. And then it was also said it is relevant to screen. I think targeted screening for AF in people uh, with hypertension or older aged people um, is recommended. Uh, blood pressure devices are already used widely in clinical practice, so it can be effectively used to detect both. Uh, it doesn't take extra time, and it's also low cost. The implementation of AFib detection algorithms in these different monitors differ from, from devices being used, but they seem to be sensitive, and, um, sensitive enough to detect atrial fibrillation uh, quite well. So to conclude, um, a, an accompanying editorial for that paper said it's not to screen or not to screen, it's not the question, it's really um, more uh, how to screen for patients with hypertension and AF. And if we first look at the who, I think we should, uh, could potentially agree that opportunistic screening for both AF and hypertension is, is recommended for people aged 65 years and older when there is a simple device that can do a sort of a pre-screening at least with, a, with these devices. Um, it can be very helpful. It doesn't have to be only patients with hypertension. It can, we can also look at other comorbidities that's often uh, coinciding with AF, sleep apnea, prior MI, heart failure, 
COPD, chronic kidney disease, obesity, diabetes. So it's these high-risk populations. And the how is, yes, we have heard before, pulse palpation has been, um, you know, used for many, many years, but we know it has more limited diagnostic accuracy, lower specificity. 12-lead ECG is the real go-to. Um, but it's not always routine in primary care and therefore not so easy to use as a screening tool. Uh, but we do think that these validated uh, cuff-based uh, oscillometric blood pressure monitors may be an appealing way to actually do it cost-effective and time-effectively within pra uh, clinical practice. At the same time, we do need more research to decide on the optimal strategies and also to see the effect of detecting AF um, during these screening uh, activities, whether it's related to improved AF outcomes. Thank you very much.